I am surprised you're still here. You're not sick of me yet? Or maybe it's just that's how good Rust is. I think that must be what it's it. So we're on day six now for Advent of Code 2021 in Rust. We are far behind the Primogen on the leaderboard right now. We've got many days to catch up. But in the meantime, I'm going to be giving you some updates on what I've been working on. So day six. This is sort of like a simulation style problem. And this problem is very easy to accidentally let the complexity blow up. But there's a trick that I'll show you once we get there to make this work quite well. So... Basically, the situation is you've got a bunch of these lanternfish. Apparently, they have got a, they get a baby every seven days. The existing lanternfish will move back to day six, and then the other lanternfish that was just born will move to day eight. So nine days till it has a baby or seven days till it has a baby. So those are the two situations. You can picture this, for example, in your internal timer, starting with three from the example, Day one, boom, it goes to two. The next day, one. The next day, zero. After that, it resets to six and it pushes a new lanternfish into category number eight. And then you just keep going and then you have a bunch of them. Your pattern looks something like this to start with and then the list grows rapidly. So the trick here, the trick here is to not simulate each of these fish individually, but to recognize that all the fish who are in day three at any given time all act exactly the same. It doesn't matter if they're old or new or whatever. So you can instead just model this as numbers of fish in a particular day or time instead of trying to simulate each fish individually. So how does the code for that actually work? Well, it's actually very short today because of that trick and... Part two is actually just instead of only simulating 80 days, we're going to simulate 256. So if your solution takes a long time for the first one, it's going to take really, really long for the second one. But our solution didn't take super long, so that's cool. So what do we do? We read in the lines and split it on the numbers because uh, six dot input looks kind of like this. It's just a bunch of numbers split. And this is the initial state that you start in. So what do we do to solve the problem? We create this vector of counts. Now, what you can imagine is, is this vector kind of looks like 0, uh, 0, 0, 0. That's 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, cool. That's what it looks like to start with. And then what we do is we add the initial conditions. So basically, we look, we look over the puzzle. And for every puzzle number that we have for the initial condition, we set our counts to that new value. So maybe it's something like 5, 2, 1, 0, 0, 3, uh, 0, 0, 0, something like this, right? That might be our initial condition that we have for the puzzle. And now we just iterate for the number of days. And for each of the days, we're going to do a little trick. And this is actually why we use vec dq instead of just vec. Now, recognize this is what I would call a micro optimization for this case, but it's it's kind of a cute micro optimization so it's okay and it's advent of code so we're allowed to do optimize whatever we feel like doing that's part of the fun so vec dq is actually a double ended queue and so what we can do is when we pop off from the front right here which i'll talk about in a second uh it actually doesn't shift the remaining values here it doesn't shift those it keeps them in place and basically moves a pointer to this spot so if instead of only having you know seven days it was 356 or some really large number this implementation would still work well uh even though for this one it really doesn't make a difference if you want to do that but this basically lets us pop off from the front and then this in effect becomes kind of like a none value you wouldn't see it inside of the vec dq but then when we push back it'll just reuse that location in memory so we don't have to do any shifting so that's kind of cool I, at least i'm pretty sure if someone knows more about this, please let me know in the comments. But from reading VEC DQ information and from my understanding of what it does, I think this is how it works. Oh, and uh, for those of you new to Rust, this syntax just means create a vector with all the values being zero of length nine, right? Because we have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight for the different days that each of the fish current internal state is. So that actually lets us access them uh, very easily. So we, for each of the days, we're going to do this little for each here. And what do we do? We get the new babies, which is the count of whatever 
number of fish are currently in day zero. So that's five in this case, right? And what we're going to do is for all of the fish who just had a baby, we're going to place them back in location six. And for all of the new babies, we push them back to the end of the list, which is effectively spot eight. We just run the simulation forever many days it is, and then we just sum up the values in our vector. So this is a really short and I think pretty simple solution. And intuitively, it makes a lot of sense. The thing you have to realize is just don't get tricked into simulating all of the different fish because you're effectively doing the same calculation a bunch of times that you don't need to do. So the fastest kind of work that you can do is work that you don't do, <laughs> right? The fastest code is no code at all. So that's, that's the solution here. And it runs very quickly with 80 and 256. I can just show us running this for day six and it's all the way done. This is why you don't want to simulate each of these individually because for part two, your answer will explode in complexity trying to calculate what each fish does on every day. Thanks for hanging out for day six. Hopefully day seven will be following shortly and hopefully I'll catch up to the primogen someday before Christmas. Anyways, thanks YouTube. I will see you all later. Bye.